Today we're going to be talking about the Weathering Waves dev talk. So we did about an hour and a half live stream just kind of going over my thoughts and opinions on this one. So this is kind of a broken down version of that. But it's going to be pretty in depth. It's honestly going to be pretty long in comparison to some of the other videos. But I do think that we're going to make this kind of more raw, less edited, because I want to kind of showcase my love and appreciation for this dev talk. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see updates on Weathering Waves, as well as hopeful gameplay for CB2 if we're able to get in. But let's go ahead and jump straight into this. I think they're probably going to talk in segments. So we'll kind of talk about each segment as it goes. I won't try to talk too much over them, even though it's going to be in a different language and they're going to subtitle it. I didn't one of those plushies. Yo, first off, let's talk about the damn drip here. <laughs> Look at my boy dripped out. No, so I think, I think, okay, so I think it's interesting. And this is one of the best things, honestly, bro, as somebody who used to cover PGR so exclusively, I think it's so amazing that Kiro Games is opening up the fact that they're really caring about the content creators because having Rexlan on here is such a good move as it i feel like it inspires other content creators bro i feel like it does like at least for me i'm like damn bro that's so cool that like he's on here he's such a dedicated dude to like the hero game stuff so seeing him here and kind of getting rewarded for the fact that he's put in so much work i don't know i feel like i feel like it's cool yeah i mean let's just take a real quick second i'm not gonna spend too much time on this but i think hero games has done a 180 in terms of being open to community that is so wild to me not only are they doing amazing with the marketing of Weathering Ways, I think that the fact that they're taking this feedback is something that I've very rarely seen in devs and not just gotcha devs, like get like devs in general. The fact that they were taking this so seriously and like we took all the feedback and even uh, like some of this stuff has to suck for them a little bit because they spend so much time and effort on just certain things. And then if they get feedback like, oh, this kind of sucks, it's like, well, that kind of sucks for the dev team because they're like, oh, I just spent a lot of time doing this. So for them to kind of go back and take that seriously and maybe kind of redo some different things that they worked really hard on to do out of feedback for the community. To me, that means it's like they're not bullheadish in the fact that they think that they're always right. It's like, OK, well, you know, obviously we spent a good amount of time in this. But if the community is saying it's bad, then we got to kind of trust that and we got to go with that. So I think that they did like I'm not saying PGR is in a bad spot, but it used to be kind of like especially for global. It didn't seem like Kiro was pretty like on board with content creators or like feedback and stuff like that because it was on a tight schedule. I kind of had to follow everything that CN did and it still kind of has to do that. But I feel like there's a more leniency now with PGR and especially with Weather Wave. So it's cool that they built it from the ground up with the idea that they're going to present it to all these markets and take all this feedback from all those markets, which I think is very, very important. Just wanted to mention that because I feel like not enough devs do it. Okay, oh, guys, like, cut to the chase. Damn,对。我可以先简单说个结论，就是几乎每个模块、每个之前有讨论到的争议问题点，我们都是。Color palette or the open world is too dull. 作为玩家我其实很喜欢莫斯峰的 Fungue Oh my god, okay, that is such a smart move. So if you didn't catch that, basically he was saying like on more intense battle focused moments that are driven by the story, it's obviously gonna have this like nice omniance and it's going to be a little bit more intense. Like you're going to feel like it's an intense fight. In an intense situation but if you're in the city you're going to feel like you're at home and kind of at this like nice vibrant atmosphere that that's what i was sensing in the cbt thing because there were certain things where you had like fog and some different like places that looked a little bit more dull but like when you get into the city it looks like very homey like this looks very homey it looks like there's life here Looks like there's settlements here. Damn, they did a really good job at capturing that. Even like that was really good too. 对，然后最后其实我们也对我们整个画面的写实度进行了一定的下调，为了把我们明朝的这种动画感给做出来。对，我们在调色上也会去参考一些比较优秀、有代表性的一些动漫作品。Animation series。
那像这种画面调整是会同步到全平台上吗？当然，全平台一直也是我们项目在攻克的一个命题之一。对，然后我们也会去确保这个视觉在每一个平台上的一个统一性。确实，相比之前。So this is definitely going to be next gen. So basically, I don't know. I seen something floating around that they're apparently going to do it on PlayStation 5. Was that ever confirmed? Because if so, that obviously means like I mean, based on just that dialogue alone, that definitely means it's going to be like on PC and uh, mobile. We already knew that, but PlayStation Five would also make sense because every gotcha that's modern at this point is coming out on PlayStation Five because even Enfield is. So it's like that was a good question. That was a good question to say like, is this all going to be like fluid between the different versions of it? Which I think is great that they have stuff like the PlayStation Five to work on because I feel like it's such a better platform to, for them to be able to express their stuff. Versus like the PlayStation 4 and stuff, it's it's really nice. This time, the scene added more and more that kind of bright atmosphere and the glowing effect also made people feel more comfortable. Um, 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 um,
不改不行的事情，只有刮骨疗伤，从头再来。Completely revise the storyline. 呃，虽然暂时没有办法跟大家同步剧情的一个改动之后是怎么样子的，大家可以简单跟大家说一下。Wait, what am I reading? That ninety percent of the story has been completely rewritten. Ninety percent. That I mean. Oh my God! Imagine putting that much effort. Like he said, he had voice acting, he had performances, he had different stuff signed up and ready. He had stuff recorded because there was a couple different places in the CBT one that they did have voice acting and some different lines and stuff like that. They pretty much literally took ninety percent of that based on what he's saying and just was like, "Okay, we're gonna listen." If that's not dedication to what the community is saying and based on feedback, I don't know what is to completely overhaul ninety percent of your story because of the fan base was just like, "This isn't enough." That to me is dedication. That they are working to make something really authentic and really community driven. Because you don't just do that if you're a developer and put money and time and resources into stuff like that. Because like even if they're you know a somewhat bigger company and have some good success and stuff like that, money's not unlimited. Like it costs money to do that kind of type of stuff, and like they have to get writers and rework stuff and doing all that different stuff. But like yeah, they're literally just like this is necessary. We don't really like you know want to redo everything and. Do that kind of stuff, but if it is something that's going to move us forward, I, I just think that's so that's so amazing to me. Even though it's kind of disheartening to hear because it's like it's sad for like the developers and the writers who kind of like spend a lot of time on it and have to rework on it. But it does give us a glimpse on why we have kind of not seen anything for the past nine months. Literally, what this is titled, what we've been doing in the last nine months, that gives us a perception of why it's been taking this long. Because they're not just sitting here and pushing stuff out and there's like whatever you know whatever they're they're taking all this feedback very very seriously on cbt1 especially and they're obviously doing a lot of different things so 90 percent is such a vast amount of it now we don't know how much of it was actually written past the cbt1 i don't know how much of the storyboard and all that different stuff that they actually did progress after that but i imagine it was quite a bit they definitely probably have like what they think is going to be like not the ending of the game obviously but like you know the wrap up of the, of the you know first arc or whatever the hell you want to call it but yeah so they definitely had a good chunk of this especially even the cbt1 they have i don't know man i played like what five ish hours of like story and stuff like that no i mean i personally thought it was like a little slower and stuff but like well that's the thing i've never heard devs in general do that that's that's like a huge thing. Like, I don't even know any devs that are just like, I'm just going to complete it overall. That's kind of wild. So yeah. So 90%, that's proof to me, dude. That's really impressive. Yeah, that's, that's an impressive percent, uh, percentage. Oh, they even did the quest restructuring. And all the cinematic, that means that they completely overhauled everything. Like, there, it looks like anyway that they're not even reusing like animations and cinematics from stuff. They're like, okay, well, we're just going to redo this whole entire thing, which we kind of seen at the beginning because this end, this beginning is a complete reanimation of it, is what I was trying to say. But apparently, I'm too stuck up on my words. But yeah, this whole front part was like a different. Intro that we've seen. Brand new storyline. Ah, our path is from the bottom up. It starts with the world's perspective. Ah, 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 the world's surface level everything very like very seemed like it was very like surface level stuff that they kind of presented of course it was a cbt one so i wasn't really like you know hurt on it or i wasn't really expecting too much because like obviously they kind of work on it but it looks like they kind of noticed that and they're like okay well we need to kind of dig into these characters a little earlier on because you want to establish these connections like pretty much when you meet them you know you want to give a reason why people care okay so they just took it all Oh, okay. So we, when we've been developing the game for over two to three years, so they put two or three years worth of work into before the CBT one got the CBT one, and then reworked a ton of shit in six months. That that's wild. That means they basically did what took them like two or three. Well, let's just say about like a year and a half to two years. Because obviously they could still use some of the characters and stuff like that. That basically means that they cut their production and development time to be able to do this stuff before the CBT2 in like half. They pretty much like ultra geared it and they cooked the hell out of 90% of revamped story. That's why. 
，但我们知道我们在做一件正确的事情，所以也借此机会吧，也想跟漂泊者们致歉。Oh, he's apologizing. You gotta do that. 体验当中给大家带来了不好的体验，辜负了大家的一些期待。作为玩家，我觉得蛮感动的，因为啊 ，one hundred percent, excellent. Excellent needed to be here. This is such a. The Rexlin is the community. He is the person that he represents, like the average player or viewer and stuff. Him being here and he's speaking, at least to, like in my regard, I do. I, I agree on one hundred percent with what Rexlin's saying here when he says, "I feel moved as a player to see the devs put so much effort in." This is one of those things where it makes you, like, yeah, the game looks great. It looks like it's a lot of fun. It looks like it's going to be a blast.、It、looks like it's going to be challenging. But these are the type of things that you want to see from a dev. Like you will put your heart and soul into something if a dev is like this. You'll kind of wait for them to cook. You'll let them do the things that they need to do to get this game out if they are communicative. He's he's apologizing for a bad experience. CBT one was fun as hell. Had some cool things. The story is a little lackluster. Some of the animations were a little. You know, needed to be adjusted, but it was a CBT one, and bro was over here apologizing, saying, "Hey, you had a negative experience at all? I'm sorry. We're working really hard to make it better." And it's like, what? <laughs> Most of the time, they'd say, "Hey, take what you get from CBT one and shove it up your, you know, shove it up your." <laughs> We're gonna do what we want. We're gonna proceed, you know, with a minor adjustments. And you know, not all games take no feedback. You know, Honkai Star Rail also took a little bit of feedback from CBT one. Revamped a little bit of their story, but not ninety percent of it. It was like a little bit of an adjustment to the beginning, and kind of like an adjustment to how people talked. But it wasn't really like a revamp of the entire story. So that's just wild, dude. The fact that he's apologizing, like, I don't know. Yeah, don't be sorry, sorry, bro. You're producing an amazing game, but I mean, maybe he feels bad. Maybe, but no, I think it's important that Rexlin being here, and I think they knew that. I think that they knew that Rexlin would represent the community and most of the players. And I think it's just really cool that they brought him on. I just, I don't know, I admire that really. And honestly, maybe this is a respect thing that they do in their culture, but I like that he's not talking to Rexlent and Sand when he's saying this stuff. When he's saying stuff that's supposed to be to us. Like he's giving their full attention here, but when he addresses this, he's addressing us and he's looking direct. Like I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of a big person on eye contact. I think it's really respectful, and I think it's it's a phenomenal that he's not like looking kind of around the room and he doesn't seem like nervous. He actually seems like I'm taking accountability, even though he, he, you know, it's not just him. He has, you know, other people kind of playing in the field and kind of helping him and obviously making stuff work. But he's taking like sole accountability as the person that's heading this project. I don't know. That speaks wonders, but maybe it's a cultural thing that they do that. But but yeah, it's wild. Uh, we now have some areas that are still lacking, but we will continue to do our best to make it work. Uh, we also welcome all of the travelers to give us feedback and suggestions. The Ming Chao will always remain listening and advancing. Actually, in the past half a century, although the Ming Chao did not release any more demonstrations, I still have seen his voice in many events. Yeah, I've noticed that. They've been at a lot of places. Like the Cologne Games Show, the Japanese Game Show, the Korean 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 Game 还有白纸在 TGS， 想问一下，还有别的相关角色的调整吗？好，那接下来就让我给大家介绍一下我们角色相关的一些调整吧。Yeah, they've been doing phenomenal on the redesigns. 所有的共鸣者都增加。Oh, they have more idol stuff. Okay. 太极动作，那这些动作在这次测试当中，大家也可以去看到。其次呢，我们对所有的共鸣者模型都进行了一个从头到脚的迭代。Oh. 啊，包括面部的。Oh my God, she's completely changed. She was one of the characters that I actually got. Uh, she's a lot of fun. Oh wait, this actually just confirmed that、uh, he's also a what is it five star? I can't remember the highest. And Kakarot as well, and the new characters.、But、yeah, she's completely not completely reworked. She still has that kind of like characteristic of her face, but she definitely has like a new headband and a whole new like. She definitely looks way more earthy. I feel like in comparison. Look at our girls. They're gonna click her. Oh, they are. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. I also got hurt too. Damn, she got reworked as well. Look at that. She has a cool little outfit now. And she has a little hairpin. Design, 等等，啊，进行了优化迭代。Oh, don't show me the go! Don't show me the go! His his design was already perfection anyway. If anybody needs 
like no redesign is our boy. This guy is like perfection. <laughs> yeah, four or five star. Okay. He he's already he was like top notch design from day one. Like whoever designed this guy, A plus. That crowd's pretty cool too. I mean, I kind of have a sucker for like the kind of tight like um combat fit. I think it's really cool. It's like aesthetically pleasing. Like it seems really, really engaging, I guess. Like he kind of has it too, but he has that nice little flow drip to him. Kakarot's just a badass, bro. Damn, the way they do male characters, PGR knows how to cook with waifus and husbandos. So we kind of saw a little bit of his stuff. So yeah, he got reworked completely. Oh, they, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is Yin Lin uh, the new character? The brawler lady? Hundreds of animations, wow. Yeah, that's an excellent ask. I want to see specifics. Yang Look neater in their outfits. Oh, they definitely kind of do. Leggings and boots with more lightweight and practical looks. Yeah, change her name. Izzy? Yeah, they made a couple of adjustments to her. They adjusted her character quite a bit. They also changed her name. I like her new design. I think it's cool. I like the gradient of her hair. Yeah, it's new characters. Lion dancing. Okay, so it's really a part of their culture. Damn, he's actually really cool. I actually like his design. Oh, his name is Ling Yang? Okay. Oh, he's kind of a brother, too. Oh my god, he stepped on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was such a cool little thing. Hold on. He steps on drums to pro uh, progress. Oh, wait, you can hear it. I don't know if you can, you can hear it. The drums. One more resonator, okay. please. Oh, I don't know how to say that. How do you say that name? Damn it, chat. You know, I don't know. Because, like, when somebody says it in their culture, obviously they're so, like, used to saying it. I feel like they say it so fast. Mm. She looks phenomenal, though. Martial arts master, okay. Oh, returning the... Oh, wait, so... Oh, she's... Oh, I like that. So she's a balance of attack and defense, it sounds like. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it seems like she's very counter-based to do high damage. Multiple platforms during this time. Yeah, Mm。比如說大家可以看一看像漂泊者的共鸣解放的一個對比,其實我們都是做過了優化調整。Oh, Running looks really good too. 
啊，当然有。其实，在上一次测试之后呢，我们也一直在密切的关注这个问题。针对这个问题，我们主要做了三个方向的优化。嗯，首先我们调整了正平的震动幅度和震动幅度。Oh, that one shakes way less. 加入了分级的配置和曲线过渡。Yeah, it was almost too much back when the CBZ one. You almost like it was kind of hard to dodge things because everything was shaking so much. 最后，其实我们在基础性能的优化上也一直在做迭代。现在在战斗当中的一个帧率会更加的稳定一些。嗯，有个问题，明朝的战斗拥有很强的机动性。I don't understand the tone marks. Okay, that's probably why I always miss it. 画面的频繁变化。Cause I get the same thing when it comes to like、uh, JP subs.、I'm、trying to remember how to say people's names in anime. Actually, also, we are always watching. In this test test, you can see a improvement in our stage progress. In this problem, we have done these three improvements. First, we improved the scene direction. We solved a lot of problems with the scene direction. Oh, thank God, dude! Locking on was almost like useless in CBT1. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it was so hard to follow the monster. Okay, great. So I was like, God dang, dude. Whatever on CBT one, it was rough trying to follow. I pretty much always just didn't have it locked on. Ah,当然有保留。QTE机制是明朝战斗非常重要的一个组成部分。我们现在称之为延奏技能和变奏技能。啊，那么在战斗中，你可以击掌共鸣能量，在共鸣能量。这是QTE stuff。你就可以通过
同时，游戏里也保留了一些细腻的操作空间。其实我还挺好奇的，明朝在这一部分有做出什么新的？嗯、mm, ，I wonder what they decided to do then。我们的目标一直是想要，不管是否热衷于动作游戏的玩家，都可以比较快的上手明朝的动作战斗，以及体验到明朝动作战斗的一个爽感。那基于这个目标，我们也一直在连招上面，包括手感上面进行持续的迭代优化。Yeah, this is a bit forward. But she's fun as hell to play, by the way. The gun, the gun、uh, resonators are so fun. Oh, it's definitely more seamless. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Echoes, let's go, bro. This is like my favorite part. Yeah, you weren't in it as long, and it definitely didn't seem like you slid back as far. <laughs> Echoes are pretty cool. I like this aspect. Yeah. 没错，首先我们全面优化了深海技能的战斗表现，不仅变得更加华丽了，现在也会更加的流畅。这里给大家展示一下飞莲之心的深海技能，大家可以看一下对比。Oh, hold on! I gotta, I gotta watch that. 飞莲之心的更加华丽了，现在也会更加的流畅。这里给大家展示一下飞莲之心的深海技能，大家可以看。Yes, dude. Okay, this is what I was hoping. It really did feel like I liked the echo system, but it felt like there were kind of like an afterthought when it came to like implementation of like in combat stuff. Like whenever you had this one, no offense to this shit, but oops. This was kind of like didn't seem like worth to grab because like you do like one little attack and it kind of knocks it back. Like, Alright, whatever. Like that seems like it doesn't really combo, or at least it didn't really feel like it comboed. But this is like a nice thing because it knocks him and then you change and you can kind of keep going. And the tracking looks better too. Yeah. 比如这里无冠者使用了一个红色预警的特殊技攻击。Well, you can summon an echo to parry the attack now. Oh my God, they're adding so much versatility to the actual echo itself. Oh my God, that is such a good improvement. Now it seems like it's even more functional and actually has a lot of like benefit to use the echo. Because to me, it was always just kind of like something I did to extend a combo or to like kind of finish the combo. It's kind of like an afterthought or kind of maybe to even engage. So that's actually dope that you can use it for like actual different things because if something's on cooldown or you know maybe you're just trying to like get in a different position or something like that or in like that case like crownless being up in the air like that it would have been kind of hard because you would have had to wait until he's like literally right in front of you landing to hit and you have this huge window now that he's coming into versus having that smaller window when he's like right in your face to parry so now you have this giant window to do it. Yeah, it also seems like echoes are just out longer, right? Right, TJ. They're just more part of the world. Ooh, the gallery. Oh, this is, that, that is far better than what they had before. No offense to what they had before, but it was a little bit more like harder to navigate, in my opinion. 或者可以在这个界面当中看到专门设计的深海模型，能够像欣赏手办一样。Oh wait, they're figurines. Oh, that's kind of dope. I like that monkey though. I don't think we saw him. I don't think we saw those little puffer fish either. Look at that dude. They're a little bit more unique. Look at this. God, that's such cool. Yeah, what's that one?、Uh, Sekiro dies twice. Is that the one? Is that the game I'm thinking of where they had that giant like white monkey? It kind of reminds me of that. The turtle, bro. Let's go. A new gameplay. Oh, don't tell me there's shinies, bro. <laughs> don't tell me there's different variations, bro. What? What? There, I knew he was a little different color. I was like, I thought he was like a darker、uh, blue, but I thought maybe they just changed the overall color. I didn't know they just shiny them. Oh shit, chat. Oh no, bro. I'm gonna be shiny hunts. I'm gonna deslock. <laughs> uh, oh, imagine you accidentally can't get her. Even show them to your friends during co-op mode. Damn, I get to show off my shinies in co-op. Okay, so just in that little brief thing, they already made echoes way more useful. 
not only can you parry with them, it looks like they're on the field a lot longer, which is also a cool thing. It makes it seems more like it's actually an extension of yourself versus just kind of like this afterthought of a hit or like maybe a little thing that you can do. And then on top of that, they made it even more collectible because collecting was already kind of fun to get all the different echoes. They added a couple of variations and they also added shinies. So now you actually have a reason to kind of get some of the ones that maybe you've got before because now you can kind of check out where they spawn and kind of see if there's a shiny one there. So not only do you want to catch one just because you want to see it and then maybe level up. I think you had to feed echoes into echoes, right? To, uh, to level them up. I can't really remember too much, but then you also get the shiny ones. That's cool. Yeah, but that's a, that's the other thing I was just about to say. So the echoes were kind of hard to get. Like the chance for them to drop was kind of hard. Yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, wait, they have a echo farm? Is that what I just read? Once you catch a certain type of echo, you can get more copies of it by challenging the attacking fields. Oh, it's like a little farming area. Holy hell, bro. You can farm them now. I mean, okay, that kind of negates the reason to go catch them other than the shiny, but <laughs> that does make it a lot easier because it was tedious. That was like one of the things that I felt like was going to be very like in game tedious is min maxing some of your echoes. Then having to go out there and find like all the different ones. So yeah, consume stamina only. That's pretty good though. Simplify the echo sets. Oh, our set effects rather. Yeah, Oh, okay. So you can set it by exactly like what you want, like element type and then like what you want it to do. The node ones are stamina locks, the open world ones aren't, okay. Then you need to have one before you can farm it. Okay, well, yeah, but that's, you know, that's cool though, because like, as you're exploring the open world, obviously you'd want to find the echo because like it's cool to see a new one, but you wouldn't want to keep going to the same spot over and over again because you're trying to like mid max an echo or something. So it's kind of cool that you're able to farm them because like obviously catching them for the first time is cool because like it's first echo you've seen or like the first type of that that you've seen. So you're like, oh damn, I kind of want to go over there and catch that. Like even if you're running to do something else and you see like a pack of the echoes or like one or two enemies and you're like, oh, I've never seen one of those before. I want to go catch one. That's cool. But I wouldn't want to like continuously or to try to remember where the hell I saw it or like some different areas for it, then have to kind of try to find where they're at. It's kind of a headache after you've caught it. So to me, it really promotes just like exploring the world and being rewarded for finding new things, but without making it tedious that you found a new thing and now you have to kind of go back to that area over and over again. Cause it's kind of like a chess. Like, you know, you scale this huge mountain and stuff and then you get a chest it's like it's super rewarding because you scale this a huge mountain which is fine but you wouldn't want to scale the mountain like you know three times a day like tof whenever they had the uh time locked chests you know how much of a burden it was to go into like a cool spot and you like scale a mountain or like a really tall building to get to a, a time locked chest and it's like come back in 24 hours it's like dude i'm never gonna come back up here <laughs> like when am i ever gonna scale this building again the reason i did that is because i knew that there was gonna be something up here to grab and now that there's nothing to like i'm not coming back in 30 hours <laughs> i ain't coming back ever like that was such a turnoff in tof like what the hell am i doing i don't know if they still have that though oh so now they have different random stuff going on Big boy. oh wait wait what did i say a special echo may drop upon completing the challenges. Oh, so you have scaling difficulty based on what you want to do. And then based on those scaling difficulties, you get more rewards. Actually, it looks like, so is this a guaranteed version of him? So if you beat this, you get guaranteed a uh, version of his echo. So that's basically what he was talking about, is if you beat some of the higher difficulties. But the fact that you can even get them, from what I understand of this, guaranteed, that's cool. Because like a lot of the cool echoes are probably stuck in some of these dungeons and stuff. And like some of these different... Um, I guess this is probably end game, right? 
So yeah, so it kind of looks like if you want like one of these really cool ones, you can do get rewarded by doing these. Boss uh, raid or whatever. Oh my god, what was that? Wait, that's the monkey's attack? That's the monkey's attack. I thought it was his attack. I'm like, wait, when did he do that? Oh, they actually have kind of like a unique attack to him. Look at this guy. He summons two monkeys and then he's also about to attack. So not only does he displace you by doing these two, he's about to... Oh, and then he jumped back. He faked you out. Never mind. <laughs> I was about to fake you out. 没错, 这也是我们一直在努力尝试的方向 让明朝世界的一个战斗浓度有所提升 OK, 我们聊了这么多了 其实到现在为止 我的心情一直都还是比较 OK, Wait, what did you say? Honestly, I'm still kind of nervous 其实到现在为止 okay. 我的心情一直都还是比较忐忑的 但我们深知 只有做好的游戏 才是玩家认同的根源 100% 这个目标呢, 我们也会一直保持进步, 是，其实对于像明朝这样规格的项目，不论是去推翻重做一些东西，还是说保持不断新的尝试，它都既需要态度和勇气，同时也离不开去完成这些的能力。这些才是最宝贵的。嗯，这也是我一直以来关注和喜